Today I'm going to share my journey to see the biocultural site of Entrema in Madagascar, where sifakas are considered sacred to the local community. Let's go! After we visited Ankara Fonseca, Nikki and I hopped on a taxi bruise and headed west on Route National 4 for about three and a half hours towards Majunga. Once we got to Majunga, we had to move quickly to the booking office before it closed at 5 p.m. It's important to book with them at least one day in advance so that they can organize your food and your transport. They also debriefed us on cultural taboos. So pork and bonzu and, uh, is fadi. Peanut. Oh. <laughs> peanut. It means to eat for a long time. And you guide. <laughs> so the taboo there is no peanuts and no pork. Okay. After our arrangements were set, we traveled by Tuk Tuk to stay the night at our friend's house. Along the ride, we got to see a glimpse into the life of Majanga. Hello. Hello from Majanga. Yes. My name is. Jerry Clay. <laughs> and that's my daughter laughing over there. She's a comedian. Oh, yeah. Like you. Yes. And we're having a little snack tonight. Yep. We have dinner at uh, late hours here, 7, 8 o'clock. We got sausages. We got fish. We got palm frites. Bari. French fries. And mango juice. And mango juice. We had to get up really early to catch our boat to get across the delta to the town of Katsepi. Good morning from Majunga. <laughs> ah! <laughs> We're going on a ferry to Entrema now to see the Crown Sifakas. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Okay. Okay, so we made it to Katsepi. Uh, it was an hour ferry ride, very crowded. I think it was 4,000 Ariari a person to get across. There were cars on the boat, there were people, there was a casket, there was a guy selling bread. Now we're just waiting for a tricycle to take us to Antrema, which is about 12 kilometers away, is what I heard. So we just got some water to hold us over for three days. Just waiting. We'll see how it goes. Once we got to the Eco Lodge, we unloaded our bags. We headed out to search for sifakas with our guide. It's common, but I can make a close up. We didn't need to walk very far for our first sifaka sighting. There was a small group in the trees above the water hole where some of the locals were washing their clothes. It amazed me just how close in proximity the Crown Sifakas lived among humans and so close to the village. These guys looked a little skeptical of us as new visitors. In general, there are nine species of Sifakas found around Madagascar. They all look very different. So we got here on a Thursday. 
and every Tuesday and Thursday it's foggy, which is taboo to go to the sacred place and especially take pictures. So we are just looking at some sea foxes around the village and then tomorrow morning we will go to the place where there are a lot of sea foxes. But we got to see some really cool wildlife today. So we continued on towards the village and we checked out the tree nursery site. It has a bunch of different species. Just next to the tree nursery, we found some brown lemurs. These guys are important seed dispersers for ecosystems throughout Madagascar. After that, we headed to the little bar. It was getting hot, so I wanted some sort of refreshment. They were reluctant to sell me a coconut, but I talked them into it. I'm a bit of a cocoa connoisseur, so here we go. Time for a little taste testing, if you will. Not the best coconut I've ever had in Madagascar. It's a little sour. Do you know what I mean? What does it mean? Like, you know what? Hold on. So so. You wanna try? No, I don't like the. You don't like coconut? No. It was on that end. <laughs> He's making a joke at how expensive it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. It tastes like it's about to go bad. Because it's, it's, it's already too hot. Yeah. You have one of the mukukoti? The coconut meat was actually pretty good though. It smells good. What do we have? We have ah, mango, rice, and of course, fish. Bon appetit! We had some downtime after lunch because it was just too hot to see anything. So I was checking out the artwork around the building and I really enjoyed looking at these little drawings from a lemur art competition. You can bring your tent or they also have rooms and beds that you can rent. It can get pretty windy in the afternoons here on the coast. On the way there, we came across a large mangrove restoration site. This area is a Ramsar site, which means that it is a wetland area considered to have international environmental importance. Here, different organizations work together to protect and monitor these sites. The people of Untrema are part of the larger Sakalava tribe. Fishing is the main activity and the first source of income for the local population. 80% are fishermen. Women and children often participate in fishing for small prawns. Crab time. Okay, hold up. This was the best crab I've ever had in my whole life. Ah, so true. Yeah. That night, I drew a portrait of a crown sifaka to give to the king. Meanwhile, Nikki found a mouse lemur, a nocturnal primate found throughout Madagascar. Early the next morning, I met with the king, or the Ampanzaka of Entrema. I gave him my sifaka drawing and a cash offering. He gave us his blessing and told us the story of how the Sifakas became sacred within his community. After that, we visited the Sifakas that lived on the king's land. The brown lemurs and the Sifakas seemed to coexist in harmony side by side. They seemed just as intrigued by us as we were intrigued by them.
You can see here that Sipakas have specialized feet and long powerful legs for a life that's spent almost entirely in the treetops. Sifakas can jump over 20 feet or 6 meters from tree to tree. They're distinguished from other species of lemurs by their vertical leaping and clinging mode of locomotion. We got a good look at their grippy feet here, which are well adapted for clinging to branches. You can also see on their feet that they have thick pads, and one of their toes on each foot bends at a 90 degree angle, just like a thumb. Sifakas eat mostly a wide variety of leaves, some fruit, and flowers. The name Sifaka comes from the sound that they make. We got to see some of the typical but interesting Sifaka behavior from grooming to foraging to feeding and even some scent marking. We saw mothers carrying infants, and we even saw a pair of twins on a mother's back. They live in family groups of up to eight individuals and are led by the females. When the males reach sexual maturity, they are often pushed out and they are in search of new territories to find females of their own. It's quite rare in the animal kingdom for mammals to be female dominant. Exact population of this species isn't well known either, but we do know that their habitat is shrinking fast and has become very fragmented. Crown Sifakas are considered critically endangered according to the IUCN Red List. Their population is suspected to have declined by 80% in the past 30 years. There really isn't much research online about these animals because they're not very well studied. I did include some references that I found in the video description. Here we can see some fun and interesting play behavior. This was definitely the highlight of our trip. I loved seeing these three wrestle in the trees. On our way back to the lodge, our guide showed us a variety of medicinal plants along the way. This connects to the folklore of how the Sifakas became sacred here. Long story short, many generations ago, a king accidentally hurt himself with an axe. A Sifaka came down from the trees and showed him which plants to use on the wound. From that point on, the people looked to the Sifakas to learn about medicinal uses for plants. It is believed that the spirits of their ancestors are found within the Sifakas. For lunch, we had fish and some little prawns with vegetables mixed in. Sadly, we had to leave first thing the next morning, but I really hope to be able to come back one day and spend more time there. What makes this site so special is the way that the community culturally connects and coexists with the wildlife. It's such a great example for other communities in Madagascar and around the world. Be sure to check their site, www.entrema.net, to learn more information about visiting, booking experiences, and ways you can support their conservation efforts. Back to the port where we hopped on a speedboat, which was a little bit more expensive than the ferry, but it was definitely quicker. On this particular day, it was super windy. We were getting splashed, so we had to use this tarp. I had to help hold it up, but eventually we got across the delta. And we had to climb over these rocks. It was a relief to be back in Majunga. Lots of dancing, and there was a celebration going on in the street, which was really fun to watch. And Nikki's friend picked us up, so we decided to go to the market to pick up some fresh produce for the rest of our time in Majunga. And then after that, we went home and cooked and relaxed. Thank you to the community of Entrema for hosting us and allowing us to document our experience. Nikki made a video in Malagasy too. You can visit the link in this video's description to watch it. Thank you to all of our friends who supported us along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you if you're thinking about visiting. Go visit Madagascar, support conservation work. See you next time.